I'm going to get a religious reference in. Uh, so talking about Elaine Ingham, soil food web, uh, there are a lot of Elaine disciples uh, in this conversation today. But we, like if I think of Christianity, there are a lot of forks, right? Like you had Catholicism and then you had the Protestant Reformation where, you know, we agree with 99% of Catholicism, but we disagree with this one thing and we're going to go down our own path. So can you all talk from your own perspectives kind of where you have a different philosophy, where your philosophies are slightly or very different than Elaine's? Like so, some of the differences between how you see her approaching things and and your personal approaches well i guess i guess to tie it into your religious thing is within the agricultural sector people are as devout as religious people are and you know each religion lives and dies by their uniqueness um and and nonetheless so we're i think we're personally in a stage where we're kind of going from this um you know, religious approach where it's us against them. It's, you know, you're seeing this mineral analysis against um, biological analysis. Like Sarah went to the Bionutrient Food con Convention last year and met up with Todd Harrington, another big soul food web guy from the East Coast. And they went and talked to John Kemp and introduced themselves. And in that next segment, John Kemp is talking about how you don't need to measure soil organism populations, you know, and it's just, Elaine kind of does this thing. I love and adore Elaine. I would not be here without her, but she responds in kind with all you need is biology. And I think where we're unique is that we incorporate everything. I come from a very qualified group of um, hydroponic cultivators in Southern California. I absolutely take that into my living soil strategies. Um, you know, and so you cannot... You know, Just quickly, what, what are some of the things you, you've adopted from the hydro community? Uh, it's the mentality. Um, you know, growing up in Southern California, like, like you, couldn't, you couldn't be fake about it. Like you had to actually do it or you had to completely be quiet. And so in the organic sector, it's much more important to be the guru, know the guru, or regurgitate the guru than actually be good at growing pot. And that's the biggest disabled aspect of the organic sector is it's much cooler to be like you can cut down three quarters of your garden each year and you still be a guru like that's insane to me from my hydroponic background like you had to be good or nobody even listened to a word you said and so I've taken that mentality and tried to be as regenerative as possible and um, you know you know, just take a holistic approach. Sarah comes from medicine. My family's in medicine. I was raised in a hospital with my single mom. I spent a lot of time sitting in a, a nurse management office listening to um, patient information prior to the HIPAA considerations, <laughs> nonetheless. But, um, you know, we take a holistic approach. We take a science-based mathematical approach so that I can approach it without emotions and I can make a quantified decision that leads to a result that's either predictable or unexpected, but at least measured so that we can come to a result that can be repeated. Um, so Elaine is biology only, the mineral people are mineral only, and we do as full effort on every aspect as we can, and then we foliar feed like we're doing hydroponics. Holistic biology. Yeah, and yeah. so, so, <clears throat> What happens is as there's a disruption in one component of the system, so like in organics or living soil, the soil minerality moves at such a slow pace that if you're correcting a mineral imbalance, you might take two or three harvests to get that under control. You need to balance that with your soil feeds or your foliar feeds. And that's why all these water only people either don't do water only or they fail saying water only is because the soil moves so slow. You have to you have to correct to the context of the situation with soil feeds or foliar feeds while using the biological population as an indicator. The main anchor of what we do is making sure that nothing we do reduces biological populations. And I think that's what makes Sarah and I actually unique is that lots of people say biology, everybody says soil food web, they all hashtag it, but like by what measure are you doing any of these things? And we govern all decisions 
based on what my wife measures through the microscope. If something I come up with that I think is a good idea wipes out populations, it obviously was not a good idea from a biological standpoint because we harmed the most sensitive biological members in the system. And so it might still lead to a yield, but if you're compromising soil organisms, you're also compromising plant health because it is also a biological system. Yeah. And I would say just to kind of um, touch on your, your um, religious little opening there is that, um, you know, the first law of chaos is that the truth is different for everyone. And that's the beauty of science is that science can unify us on what we can all, you know, achieve if we adhere to certain principles, whether you're KNF, whether you're soil food web, whether you're um, hydro, anything, there's certain principles that underlie biological systems. And so that's all we're trying to say is just quantify it, know what you're doing and, and integrate that into your IPM strategy as your number one thing you do is get that system in place that you know what you're doing nutritionally to support that plant. And if there's something that's been going wrong, a messenger being sent to you via a bug or a disease, then you start looking, okay, where, where is the crack in the system? What are, you know, is it nutritionally based? Are we pretty sound there? Do we need to do more analytics there? Do we, do we um, look at, like Lydia was saying, do we need to, we're seeing a certain pathogen, do we need to look at our water system? Are we cleaning that enough? Just those kinds of sound principles, but just to wrap that all in mm -hmm. anyway. The, the only real issue that, you know, Elaine and I, because I respect the shit out of her. I think she's a brilliant woman. But, and, and she came to me to speak to me about, remember we had talked about driving those uh, viruses out of those plants using the earth boxes. And so she was fascinated because it, that's anaerobically driven using lactic acid and sub-irrigation. And so what we came to was that, what's the definition of aerobic? Because really it's a certain parts per million of oxygen present. And so in this gray area of interpretation, there was which method is it considered an anaerobic delivery or an aerobic delivery? And that's where, like my mom was a scientist and she's brilliant, but she always made sure I remembered that you used to be burned alive because the, the sun rotated around the earth. And if you didn't say that, they're crucified. And that was pretty current science at the time. And so she always kind of let me understand that we only see snapshots and we know as much as we can right now, and we have to work with that. And it doesn't mean that we don't know, but it means that's our limit of understanding. And I think when you, you get into this religious dogma, what happens is you start to take away reason and you just yeah. follow blindly. And what you need to be able to do is take the, the, the education from the individual and understand how to apply it. And if other people are having success with contrary methods, you need to investigate and try to find out what is the common success of all methods because something is occurring that's succeeding. Yes. And so I think that, you know, with what we're all trying to do is, is understand there's an art and a science we're trying to merge and we only know so much about either. And I think that's where Dr. Ingham gets jammed is because I don't think she could be any smarter at what she is. I mean, she's, if you spend some time with him and she's brilliant and she's got such a nice, rhythm with it that it's she lives that shit mm -hmm. but that's what she knows and then when you run something that you don't have the same understanding but it's doing something it can't be wrong and so it's really trying to bring everyone into the same area to say hey look with all our understandings we maybe can get our arms around part of the problem but none of us are, are so comprehensive that we control the information on a thing because the thing is so complex Right. And so that's, totally. the only, that's the only mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's always evolving and that's what she always says. But what Scott ended up doing and why I kinda why I mean I appreciate what he's done. And actually there was a guy that was one of the advisors. Elaine has these advisors and these are the people that go and do all her work all the way through and you know, for for the street explanation of things is, is what I'm giving right now, not the scientific like you guys, but Basically, yeah, within her group of advisors, they all perform her work and like the disciples, so to speak. And Scott and Sarah are those, you know, have gone through that process. And there was somebody before them, a homie of mine named Ian Davidson, 
he started a company called Biologic Crop Solutions that a lot of people use, but he ended up moving to Hawaii and getting into some other stuff. And uh, Scott and Sarah, when I met Scott, he was basically jumping on as an advisor and learning and doing and saying the stuff where Ian stopped his work and moved into something else. And that one of the examples is going from brewing compost teas to doing these extracts. But what Scott did and, and, and Sarah is they took her information and geeked out on it and went deep and deep into cannabis. You know, a lot of people kind of fuck with Scott sometimes going, do you grow and stuff? And yeah, I'm smoking some of his weed right now, but he's been on big facilities doing big work. And I've been to those and even Kevin, you've recommended something to uh, a farm to have me go check out. And then after I do my work, I recommend Scott. And next thing you know, the place is blowing up. And so oh, yeah, at the end stacked. of the day, yeah. And so at the end of the day, what's happened and what Scott decided to do was create those events. And we did them with Elaine because Elaine was kind of like, you know, something that really drove a lot of people to get in there. But Scott's data that had been collected in cannabis was the real eye opener. And I remember the first one we did, Elaine was at the edge of her seat, like, holy shit. By the third one, I don't know if she could t handle the uh, spotlight that Scott was taking anymore. And she kind of started deteriorating those events. And then we had Kevin jump on with us. And we had some good ones after that. And then eventually, I'm no longer with the situation that we were doing to create those. And so subsequently, a lot of that has stopped. But the information was insane that was coming out of that stuff. And that's what I clinged on to was Elaine seated but scott and sarah sprouted and it yeah. was much easier for me to understand because I, I i've read her papers or looked at some of her shit and i don't even know i don't even speak that language yeah scott's well that well that's what you said like i called you on the phone back in like 2013 trying to get some compost tea brewing products i got you on the phone and i was asking like really specific questions about dr elaine and regards to my family's farm and you're like look kid if this is important to you like you got to find this dr lane woman and figure out what she's talking about and then you you must have had a bowl or two because you're like look man all these cannabis people they keep saying soil food web but i don't know anybody that's measuring it like this woman is saying it you know and so if you like growing pot and you think you can swing a microscope like get down and I took that really seriously and I did do that. And I don't think the market at wide really understands the level of analysis that we can and have provide and aggregated and distilled down into really functional advice. And it's just, I think it's a symptom of the market's not quite ready yet still, you know, we- Well, we were trying to take that to big ag too. And so I had already spent a shitload of time spraying walnuts with, with compost tea when, oh, we needed to get it into the irrigation system, spraying it was barely doing shit. And when you called me, you were like, yo, we're going to set up this thing and spray these fields or hay or whatever fields. And I was like, no, no, you got to drench that shit. That's what and, we did. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so basically it kind of evolved from, you know, like a lot yeah. evolved from there. Yeah. But, you know, again, it was, you know, the comprehension of these things and the way that was laid out to us, everybody that I knew and at that time was, we only sprayed compost tea. Mm -hmm. You know, you maybe put a little into the soil, but uh, it was a big spray thing at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, but what we did was we, we did the data points. So both Sarah and I are capable of doing the full microscope process and we showed up to a farm. That's exactly what we did. And to my knowledge, we're the first people to really provide that to the market. And we went crazy because both, you know, Sarah comes from medicine where lives are on the line. And if you don't document properly baselines, then, you know, a lot of problems come from that. And I had a construction business that had a lot of liability working in schools. So when we got into commercial cannabis officially, you know, the first thing we did was establish all those baselines so we could know where we're starting so we can know where we're going. And what we ended up finding was, you know, one particular facility had like a perpetual harvest model and we came in and took samples of each of the populations that were on this two week cycle. And we were able to drill down to a decision that was made by the cultivator that turned things into the direction of mold. And so as far as four years ago, we were able to come into a facility and within 48 hours, figure out the week that led to all the problems and what that decision was. 
And I just don't think people are still really ready to wrap their mind around that that's an analytical technique that can be executed and what they can learn from it. But, you know, the people that have figured out how to use it, you know, back to square one of not saying anything about it. And so people don't know that it exists because the people that have used it most definitely don't champion it, you know. Well, and the thing that Elaine deals deals with them more than anything else is that, you know, she came in um, where, you know, the papers didn't exist on any of this material, you know, like soil microbiology wasn't a common discussion, certainly wasn't anything that was uh, able to be communicated to the point that you, you can have a conversation in an eight or six hour class in one day and give right. people more information than they had ever been exposed to in their entire life, right. you know, and they've been cultivating or farming for a real long time. So, you know, and she also comes from this point of, um, I really like Elaine. I think she's, she's phenomenal, just like everyone else has said, but you know, she, her position, at least originally, um, was, you know, very defensive against, you know, traditional ag, you know, she has a lot of people that are trying to argue with her. She has issues with, you know, you know, grant money and, you know, who's funding the university that she was working for at the time and how all of that's like changed and modified in her life and how that's impacted and driven her to, you know, author over a hundred papers and really, you know, initiate the science in this realm in a, in a whole new way. And, you know, just like I had said earlier about the gut microbiology, this is something that we're going to be watching for, you know, decades to come. All of the different tiny little intricacies of how these um, microorganisms work together, how they work with the minerals, how it all like works with pH and gets into the plant and how all that can be very finicky, you know, especially with cannabis strain by strain or with different, um, different species of plants in general. This is just something that's going to be developing over time. And as we all know, you know, what works, what works for some person, you know, one guy doesn't work for the next one, you know, five miles down the road. And there's a series of reasons why that's the case. And so you just have to tune into your own, your own farm, what your, um, what you've got going on, what the benefits, you know, what the drawbacks are of your current situation and research it to the best of your ability. Cause that's the other thing too, is like we live in a culture where everybody just wants to look at something on Instagram instead of actually reading a paper. And then in the, if they actually do go read papers, they don't know how to determine whether or not this paper is sound. If it has, you know, if there's a large enough sample size, if there's any statistical relevance to what's being, what's being spouted at the end in a conclusion and, you know, taking those jumping off points, um, you know, Elaine does really, you know, spectacular science, but taking the jumping off points that she's providing and the stuff that Scott's giving and putting it into practice in your own facility, uh, to the best of your ability and, and coming out with something that was better than what you had started with before, you know, and I think that we're seeing that, in, you know, the quality of the material just increases day by day, which is great. <laughs> context is everything. It needs to be appropriate to your context, what you're capable of. Yeah.